So we finally have some interesting news to talk about when it comes to ChatGPT. It's been a long time since they've said anything. Let's talk about their spring update. So the first thing they've done is they've introduced a new model, which we will, of course, be testing in this video. And you can see it reasons across audio, vision, and text in real time. And I've been testing this model already. It seems very, very good. And this is quite obviously, in my opinion, um, their version of Opus. So GPT-4.0 stands for Omni. It's a step towards a much more natural human computer interaction. It accepts as input any combination of text, audio, and image, and generates any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. Interesting. It can respond to audio inputs in as little as 232 milliseconds with an average of 320 milliseconds, which is similar to human response time in a conversation. That means you can have a chat with this, basically. It matches GPT-4 Turbo performance on English and code. Very good. With significant improvement on text in non-English languages. So you can see what's happening here. Okay, I'll tell you right now, Claude is not that good at foreign languages. So what is GPT doing? We're saying... It's saying we are the best at um, foreign languages, while also being much faster and 50% cheaper in the API. Very interesting. So it's actually 50% cheaper. GPT-4.0 is especially better at vision and audio understanding compared to existing models. So this is actually a pretty big update, especially because it's cheaper than GPT-4. Prior to GPT-4.0, you could use voice mode to talk to ChatGPT with latencies of 2.8 seconds and 5.4 seconds to achieve this. Voice mode is a pipeline in three separate models. One simple model transcribes audience text, GPT-3.5 or GPT-4 takes it. Okay, so basically this is GPT-4.0 um, is a new model end-to-end -end across text, vision, and audio, meaning that all inputs and outputs are processed by the same neural network. That's a huge leap forward. Instead of transcribing it, it, it actually just understands the audio. Because GPT-4.0 is our first model combining all of these mod modalities, we are still just scratching the surface of exploring what the model can do and its limitations. So it sounds like they have really gone for it, um, which is going to be interesting. Now, are we going to see this high quality every time? Wow, this is actually crazy. That's super interesting, super, super interesting. So we can see here they love these graphs, um, and GPT-40 appears to be beating everything <laughs> including opus so okay opus seems to be beating it on this one here this is an interesting update if this is true then this is huge and also language being able to do different languages is massive and doing them well so already chat gpt was significantly better at doing languages but now we'll really see this my fiance is italian she is using chat gpt to write in italian She'll know and she will tell me if this update is actually working or not. So another really interesting thing is introducing GPT-4.0 and more tools to ChatGPT free users. So I'm hoping that bringing more intelligence and advanced tools for free. When using GPT-4.0, ChatGPT free users will now have access to features such as... Okay, so if GPT-4.0 is free, that is big. That is a Big, big update. We're starting to roll out more intelligence and advanced tools to free users. So this, I don't think this is currently there yet, but I do think GPT-4.0. There will be a limit of the number of messages that free users can send with GPT-4.0. Yeah, I don't think this is quite out yet, so don't get too excited, but it looks like GPT-4 is finally going to be free. Now, let's check the most important thing. Oh, what is this? ChatGPT desktop app. Oh, for both free and paid users, we're also launching a new ChatGPT desktop app for Mac OS. Yo, I need a Mac. What is going on? But it's designed to integrate seamlessly into anything you're doing on your computer with a simple keyboard shortcut. You can instantly ask ChatGPT a question. You can also take and discuss screenshots directly in the app. Now, that is interesting. That is a very interesting update. Then the rest of these are just kind of quality of life updates. Now, I want to take the test that I've been doing. So if you don't know about this test, basically what this test does is it gives a huge amount of input to uh, a large language model and asks it to select relevant um, 
items from this list of data. So ChatGPT and also Gemini were doing much worse than Opus. Let's see how ChatGPT 4.0 or 4.0 or whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know why they don't just release ChatGPT 5. Um, let's see how it does. Okay. One thing I'll say is it's much, much quicker. Okay. So looking at this, none of the, you can't, you, you can't actually wear any of these to this kind of event. You can wear this one. It's managed to get one. So yeah, it hasn't done that much better. We will just quick, I'll, I'll show you what this is. Um, basically it's a list of iSuits products and there are probably 10 to 15 that you could wear to a special occasion, a formal special occasion. If I do the same thing in Opus, I do the exact same call, you'll see that the products, oh, I've hit the limit. We'll use the, uh, we'll use the front end, uh, the console instead, the workbench. So we'll run this and then we'll see how this does. So please choose 10 relevant products and designer links for an article about black tie tie attire for men. So yeah, you can see Opus is still significantly better um, just by the fact that it's just instantly picked two items that you can actually wear to an event like this. This is the point of this test. You cannot wear anything, okay? You can't wear this to a black tie event. You cannot wear this to a black tie event. You can't wear this. You can't wear this. You can't wear this. You can wear this. So the whole point of this um, this test is to show how bad or how good the model is at understanding quite complicated questions. And you can see, although this has gone a little bit off topic now, the first three at least, you could wear all of these to a black tie tie event. You could also wear these, sh well, you can't wear these shoes, but it doesn't know that. It just sees Barber Napoli black leather shoes. Um, it doesn't know that they're sneakers. And then um, the rest of these you probably wouldn't be able to wear. Yeah, you probably you could wear this shirt if you wore the right colored uh, top. Anyway, it looks like the model is not that much better, but I will say I was testing this with coding before. It does seem a little bit better at coding. It seems to understand things a little bit better. It actually fixed a big problem that I was having for a long time with um, with one of my custom dashboards. That's pretty much going to be the end of the video, guys. I do like the update. It's not quite there with Opus. I still think Opus is better. Uh, Opus probably scored 5 out of 10. This has probably scored a 2 out of 10. But it's a lot faster, and it does seem a little bit better at coding. It's a really, really nice step forward to the fact that it's multimodal, and you can put whatever you want in here, and it can also output in any format as well. Yeah, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.